Good morning, everyone. I'm going to call our meeting to order. Thank you very much for, for being here. Uh, just a couple of routine reminders that we, we always try to, to uh, make. Uh, we have uh, many people that listen online, so when you're speaking, if you please state your name so they, they know who's speaking. Uh, we ask that those of you online, if you're not uh, participating on the agenda, that you please keep your microphone and cameras off uh, for help with the meeting. Certainly, we will monitor the chat feature and the raise your hand feature best we can so that if you have a question or comment, we'll be sure uh, and call on you. So glad to be here today. Sam, would you mind taking roll, please? You bet. Regent Lane. Present. Regent Ice. Present. Regent Johnston. Here. Carla will be coming. She will be talking, giving some updates in a little bit. She's addressing stops right now. And then I'd like to take a second to introduce our new VPAA, Rusty Monholland. And Rusty, if you wouldn't mind saying a few words about yourself. Oh, okay. Um, uh, welcome. Hello, everyone. I'm very pleased to, to be here. This is my third day on the job. Uh, I'll give you just a, a little bit of uh, background about me. Uh, uh, first of all, my given name is Rusty. It's not short for anything. Uh, I think mom wanted a son and dad wanted an Irish setter. <laughs> uh, I joined my dad uh, after high school uh, in a, a steel fabrication shop he had. and I worked as a welder and machinist for a number of years. Uh, about 10 years after high school, I started Washburn uh, at night, uh, completed my degree there in history and political science, and then got graduate degrees in history at uh, KU, both master's and PhDs. Uh, I taught at a number of uh, institutions in Kansas, Washburn, Friends, KU. Uh, I've taught at the University of Missouri. And uh, I was tenured uh, uh, at Hood College in Frederick, Maryland uh, in uh, 2005 or so. Uh, I left Hood uh, and uh, entered into state higher education policy, first with the Missouri Department of Higher Education, where I held uh, the same position, uh, chief academic officer there uh, as this position. Uh, I, in 2019, I uh, became the CHEO, the president and executive director of the South Carolina Commission on Higher Education. Uh, I stepped down from that position in January. My wife and I, who's also a native Kansan, uh, we wanted to get back to this area where family and friends uh, and really where our roots are. Uh, and this opportunity came up, and it was very fortuitous. Maybe it was fate or kismet, but uh, we are here. I am here, and she will join me as soon as we can sell our house uh, in South Carolina. So thank you all for welcoming, welcoming me, uh, and I'm so happy to, to be here and try to give back a little bit to the higher education system that's been so good to me and my family. Well, we're thrilled to have you uh, very much and welcome back home. Thank you. I know your team is very glad to have you because they have been really trying to carry um, chop wood and carry water, as some <laughs> might say. So we thank you. Let's go around and introduce ourselves so that Rusty has an opportunity to know who's in the room. Jalen. All right. So I'm Jabin Parnell, the uh, student government president at Pittsburgh State University. Good morning. I'm Shirley LaFever. I'm the EVP and Provost at Wichita State. I'm Heather Morgan, I'm the Executive Director of the Kansas Community College Association. I'm Jill Arnstorf, Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs at Fort Hayes State. Alicia Johnston, a new regent. Sandy Lane. I'm Rita Johnson, I'm the Interim Vice President for Workforce Development. And everyone else, please. Oh, I'm Susan Henry. I'm administrative support for uh, the various groups here at KBOR. Meet you, Susan. Gage Rolfe, I'm your Associate General Counsel here at the Board of. Hi, Rusty. My name is Elodie Jones, and I'm the Faculty Senate President of Fort Hayes. Very nice to meet you. Hey, Rusty. I'm Joe Dowling, and I'm the Faculty Senate President from Wichita State University. I'm Marlon Liker, trustee at Kobe Community College, also a president at KACC, this present point. I'm Carl, I'm the president at Butler Community College. Golm, Interim Vice President for Academic Affairs at Cloud. How are you? Do you know someone? Samantha. Oh, Sam. Well, he knows of me. Course. Sam Cable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Thank you all very much. And, and we, we are thrilled to have you. I'm, I'm, not, I'm nondescript. <laughs> oh, my. I will pay, I'm, I'm I will pay for that. No, no, no. I'm Carl Eisen. For a minute, I thought I was going to have Regent Mendoza's badge in front of me and I could consolidate some power. Votes, <laughs> but I lost that. So I'm going to one vote again. My apologies, sir. No worries. All right. With that, uh, we uh, ask for approval of our minutes from our March 5th meeting. So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? Second, please. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All right. Terrific. We're now ready for our discussion items. Uh, and we'll turn it over to Sam. Okay, thanks. So we're, we're going to start by talking about the slight change to the AY24 performance reporting expectation. So as you'll recall, last month, this meeting, we got some feedback from the institutions um, on the performance agreements, the projects associated, interrelatedness of the projects, and the current workload. Regent Lane had us put a working group together. I appreciate everybody who volunteered to be on that group. And we met... Um, the day after the agenda for the March 5th meeting went out. So this item didn't include get included on that agenda because there just wasn't time. But the, the group met and the recommendation was to remove the requirement that the academic degree maps adhere to the specifications of the degree map guidance documents. There were two um, just for this year. So just for the report due this July, 2024. Um, some folks thought that would alleviate some of the extra work that would need to be done this year just to get all of the degree maps to reflect the new general education framework that's going officially into effect next fall. I do want to clarify, the expectation is that uh, those degree maps still be located on a landing page so that institutions can provide us with one link. For that, uh, that that eases work for advisors and so many people involved, and also that there is the expectation that a degree map be created for each program on campus. Um, so I'm going to turn it back over to you, Regent Lane, unless you want some more detail on that change. Thank you very much, Sam, and thanks for all your work and flexibility on this. So, Regents, any uh, questions or clarity that is required with this uh, minor, we call it, adjustment for one year? Okay. Of course, it's always in the eye of the beholder, but, right. but I'm right. good with it. I'm, I'm, I think it's great. We had the, the people volunteered to be on the group and made the changes, and I think it was wise you put this on the agenda. Previously, I think we're in a much better position than we were. Thank you. Thank you for the group, too. Provost Arnsdorf, anything, anything you want to add? No. All right. Thanks for the conversation and, yeah. and the clarity that came out of conversation and hopefully the change <laughs> right it comes out of the conversation okay well, with that sam we need a motion to move it to the full board agenda so, so move is there a second second all those in favor aye aye oh, okay i was just thinking this is like a volleyball match yeah, it is you quick all so right you're really ready to go <laughs> passes unanimously thank you thank you very much and thanks to everyone for their help in that now we're ready to discuss the uh agreement guidelines and procedures right and i think yeah that starts on page 22 of your agenda um per board policy the board has adopted guidelines and procedures for the development of these performance agreements uh, with the post-secondary institutions the guidelines and procedures are detailed in the document on page 22 when the performance funding model changes as it did with the move to the project-based model that we're doing now the document has to be updated to reflect those changes. Um, a draft of this document was shared at the virtual meeting on March 5th, but no action was taken at that time. Just give people that time to digest it. It does need approval by BASC and the board, um, and it's also on today's board agenda. It gives a brief background of the performance agreements. It ties them to the strategic plan. And it reminds us that the project-based performance funding model is based on institutions utilizing proven practices that will position the system to move the needle on building a future strategic plan. It specifies the, uh, specifies the five projects involved with the agreements, math pathways, co-requisite math support, developmental education, co-requisite English support, developmental education, system-wide course placement for English and math gateway courses, and degree maths. Um, indicates each project shall be worth 20% of funding. Um, and that is 
I think the best way to depict, depict that because each year's report is gonna be just a little bit different. So the components are gonna change just a little bit. So that's, um, it also contains the state statute that refers to this process. So that's kind of a summary of the guidelines document. Uh, there have been no changes made to this since the last time we visited right. the document. Thank you for that clarity. Dr. Monholland, uh, from your insight, uh, any reflection on this process that would be helpful? Um, I, uh, in the, the three days I've had to, uh, to, to really think about it, uh, I'm very excited about the initiatives, first of all. I think they're absolutely uh, crucial for us to implement uh, to help uh, ensure and, and increase student success rates across the state. And that will accrue so many benefits to the institutions, retention, uh, more graduates and so forth. Um, I'm, I'm going to reserve judgment on some of the process. Uh, Sam and I and uh, Carla have been talking about uh, what our next steps are. I have a few thoughts of what we might do, uh, some, some kind of intermediate steps, some intervening um, procedures we might do to help get these on track. Uh, I've got, I have contacts uh, in uh, uh, agencies across the, the country, other organizations that might be able to provide us with some help. So I'd like to enlist uh, whatever outside assistance we can uh, bring in to uh, not only help staff, but also uh, help uh, the institutions as well. Um, I'm I'm, uh, uh, you know, fully committed to uh, what the, the board is trying to accomplish, wanting to accomplish, and uh, we'll do everything I can to keep moving this process forward. And because uh, I think what it will do is, is uh, produce what we all want, and that's helping more Kansas students find the success they seek uh, in higher education. Thank you for that. I know your experience will help us with the implementation of this. And that's really important. The provost remind us it's all about the implementation. So we thank you for that. So, uh, David, I wanted to offer you an opportunity. I'll put you on the spot. But as a student who is, uh, will receive, or your um, students that follow you will receive the impact of that, what, any thoughts about any of these initiatives that you want to reinforce? I'd say mainly um, whenever it comes to like math pathways and different things like that, um, it's really important that whenever we're thinking about um, the future degrees of students, what really matters for students to take throughout their courses. Um, a lot of times, a lot of the classes that students feel like they're taking in their gen ed, they feel like they have no benefit to them in the future. Um, and I feel like this will really help to start eliminate that where students really feel like the classes that they're taking benefit them in their future. Um, also too, with, um, with having it be system wide, just the, to be able to transfer um, seamlessly between the Kansas system schools is going to be also a great benefit to students um, because there are a lot of students who they may start off at K-State or KU and may figure out that the D1 scene isn't for them. And so they may go to one of our smaller institutions or maybe vice versa. Um, and also with our community college students, it's going to be very important for them as well to kind of have this seamless transition. Um, so as a transfer student myself, I fully, um, I, I love to this entire plan, just to be completely honest, just because it provides those opportunities. Thank you for your insight. Rusty, just so you know, we got Jabin from the dark side of Missouri to do so. <laughs> which, which has already implemented. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, with that, we need a motion to move this forward to the full board agenda. So moved. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you. All those in favor, aye. signify by saying aye. 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 All right. Aye. So there you go. So it, it needs something else. Sam, then I just wanted to know if you want to um, have the institution share the degree maps that we talked about. Oh, that's right. Bit. Very good. So if you could have them do that, then it doesn't belong in the guidelines. So I didn't say anything previously, but we had talked about we make some kind of a mid time frame check in to see how we would do it against these. So early prediction to funding is that still our intention? Yes, it yes it is, okay. and, and I think it'll tie nicely into getting the insight on the support that we could provide. Okay, so. Thank you. Sam's made note of that, so make sure that I don't lose sight of that. Okay. All right. So Jennifer Brown from NCK Tech, are you on? I am. I'm here. I'm going to start sharing my screen. Just give me one sec. Thank you. All right. 
So first, I just want to say thank you to uh, board staff. Thank you, Sam, for letting us uh, be able to share our, our maps here with everybody today. Um, as I mentioned um, previously, uh, we we have a prescribed uh, programs in um, our area for NCK Tech as being one of the technical colleges. So the degree maps are a little bit maybe easier for us to put together because our gen ed package is 15 credit hours for the AAS degree. Uh, we started this process as part of a continuation of our catalog process. And so when we created our webpage, we, we developed these maps as part of that process. And so we're just gonna pick a couple of uh, programs to share. And so I think we were gonna lose automotive tech. So that's in our transportation division. And as you can see, when you come into the page, uh, we have some information about the program. We show our accreditation and then it goes down into what the degree map looks like. And so um, you can click on any of the semesters and see what courses, total credit hours. Um, you could click on any of the courses and from that you'll get a catalog description that allows the student to see what the course is, um, any prereqs, any co-recs that are needed for that. So they could click through to each of those courses. And then also as we go down um, below, there is the general education requirements. And if we click there, you could see the courses that are required for students within this degree for general education. And then that those are transfer eligible courses as part of the transfer and articulation um, council. So you can see that is mapped there as well. And then a total credit hours of 68. So being within that cap for the AAS degree. Um, and if we wanna go to nursing, just to see another example of how this works. Sorry, I left it how it was the last time. I'll That's back perfect. Yeah, we could just, yep. Okay. So again, our pages all sort of look the same and have the same sort of layout. There's more information, obviously, here with nursing, because we do have requirements through accreditation of information that needs to be included on this page. But again, we lay out each of the semesters that's required for a student to take, as well as the general education courses that are part of that program. Um, you could click through to any of those courses to get a uh, course description, um, and then you can see which courses are eligible for transfer and articulation on the gen ed side so that we can see that those can seamlessly move throughout the state universities or community colleges for transfer at that point. And then the total required credit hours as per alignment. So each of our certificates or our degree programs uh, has this on each of their pages so students can access this at any time. Um, we update this as we update our catalog process. And so we do that annually. So at the end of this academic year, then we will go in and um, update with any catalog changes for the next academic year, and then make those changes here on our website as part of our process. So thank you for allowing me some time to share. Thank you very much, Jennifer. It's a very engaging pages. Uh, for me, I want to spend some more time on it. So we appreciate you showing how you're um, how you're working through those updates and process. Any comments or questions from others? Looks very well done. Thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you for the kind comments. We appreciate it. Thanks, Jennifer. Yeah. Thank you very much. We also have Barton and Hutchinson. Right? Okay. Elaine Simmons, are you on? Yes, I am, Sam. Elaine, thank so, you. I need a process check. We just sample is this? Yes. Right? Okay. Yes. All these right. guys have already gotten all of these done um, and with flying colors. Okay. So. Thank you. Sam, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to twist things up just a little bit from how I presented earlier this morning. I want you to, to leave, leave the screen where it's at. You're under the box that says curriculum guides. Open up that accounting uh, curriculum guide for me for just a okay. minute. I want to start this way. Mm -hmm. So, folks, I'm Elena Simmons. I'm the Vice President of Instruction, and thank you for the opportunity to share the work that the college has done. Prior to the notice from K-Board to move to degree maps, we operated uh, with what we call curriculum guides, and you're looking at an example of what our curriculum guides look like. Once we were notified of the, the requirement to move to degree maps, it, it gave us an opportunity to really take a look at ourselves. So last March 23, we formed a subcommittee. We looked at what we currently had for our students that we annually review in the fall, and we looked at the format sheet that was provided by the Kansas Board of Regents and we began working together. Our committee was made up of faculty and staff. 
We spent a lot of time with our communications folks, our web designer, our graphic designer. And let's go back, Sam, to an actual degree map for the rest of my comments. Um, now what you see is our newly developed template for the required degree map. These are done for all certificates, all degrees. Um, we made a goal to do our, our work on the front end in the spring and the summer to come up with our new template, to align with the format guidelines, and then took that tool into our fall 23 review that we do on an annual basis, looking at all our different programs. And we made a deadline for ourselves to be done with this project by March 1st of this year, which we met. Enrollment, as most of you will agree, opens up for the fall next month. And so we now have these degree maps for our different programs. We did spend time um, training our advisors uh, in February, um, working with them on the new system-wide gen ed pro program, as well as the new maps, and have made this available. There's now additional information for advising notes. We have the semester by semester, which is something I had hoped for for a long time. So thanks for the nudge. But we do have these available, and I, I have to tell you, this is not due to me. This is due to a very large amount of people across our system from our registrar's office to our, our advisement center to our communication, IR, IT, instruction. A lot of people put their hands into this, and, and I do think it's a better product. I think it's better for our students. I think it's better for our advisors. We look forward to starting to use those for our fall 24 enrollment. And, and hopefully the, the overall uh, experience will be good. Although I know tweaking always comes with something that's new. Thank you. Thank you very much, Elaine. Would you give us some insight into biggest challenges that you faced as you transitioned to this process? You know, I thought at first the biggest challenge, Sam, can you go back to just the, the web page where you can toggle? between the two. You know, one of, one of the requirements in the KBOR fact sheet was that there be a singular place where students could go to in addition to where those maps would be on those individual program web pages. And, and we kind of fussed with that for a while, but I'm very excited to now have this page where we direct students that are coming in prior to fall 24, those coming in fall 24 and after, where there is a singular place as well as a place individually on the program pages. I think probably the greatest challenge was working with our graphic designer and, and having the opportunity to have something that had a Barton look to it, that met the stipulations from KBOR. There was a lot of conversations, a lot of getting past, this is how we used to do it, as, as we all are challenged when we go into something new. But I think time, uh, it does take a lot of time. And, and you do all of these all of these things while you're doing everything else that you're responsible for. So I think probably the greatest challenge, uh, as others has remarked, it takes a lot of time, but it's done. We're glad it's done and, and we're ready to get started for the fall. And remind us of that transition timeline. Was it 12 months? Was it a little bit longer than it, that? It was 12 months for us. Okay, thank you very much. Uh -huh. Any other questions for Elaine? I just had a comment. I think it looks really good. I really appreciate the fact that the transition, you're still retaining the curriculum guides and the degree maps. I think that will help your students. And I'm looking forward to seeing, you know, what sort of uh, input and right. uh, outcomes you get after this first year. And we will definitely bring that. Thank you for that. We'll definitely bring that subcommittee back because there will be no doubt uh, additional feedback. Once you really start using something, it's one thing to see it in draft one thing to take folks through training as you know it's a whole nother thing when it's the process so we, we will see what we get thank you thank you very much all right thank you so hutchinson community college is our final institution who agreed to demonstrate their degree maps for us trisha paramore are you on yes thanks sam uh we appreciate the invitation to present today um i'm going to be uh introducing Jess Fortner, who is our Curriculum and Program Improvement Coordinator at Hutch Community College. Um, our mission is centered around learning and collaboration. And uh, this was definitely a learning and collaborative process to get our um, degree maps um, created. Um, Jess led a very highly collaborative process that resulted in uh, degree maps that are based in live data 
so that anytime we make changes on the back end, everything is automatically reflected on our website. Um, so it makes for timely updates and a more efficient process. So I'll turn it over to Jess at this point. Thank you. Thanks, and I'm gonna share my screen. So I'm Jess Fortner and thank you for this opportunity. So what you see on your screen right now would be a specific degree pathway for an AS degree. This is chemistry. So it, it was like about a seven month process of developing a focus group using the complete College America and the K-Board guidance for degree maps. And so what I did was I took a variety of people and I our website was very outdated and not user friendly. And based on the feedback that I received from a variety of people, including students, we made these massive updates. One of the biggest things that I learned is that I speak a different language than DevOps and marketing. So it was kind of learning, becoming kind of bilingual or trilingual um, amongst all of us to make sure we got the right product. So what you see here is some new information. We wanted to add information on each degree pathway really to explain to students what an associate of science degree is. We wanted to be really clear as to what the general education requirements were also, because we wanted students to know that those were, it was a different piece. It's a layer on top of the degree. So we added in a link here, which would take them to the system-wide gen ed information. Um, and then below, we broke it down very clearly, just like the guidance had said, where we had the system-wide gen ed at the top, because our faculty felt like that was really important for students to see first, um, and we coded it accordingly. And when you open these up, for instance, if it is, this is chemistry, so when you open up the natural and physical science lab options, you see that there's a, our list, that's our approved list, but we put stars next to courses that they might recommend. Um, so all of these buckets have um, stars as needed for transfer. And then down below, we have courses that um, our faculty said, this is very important that you take these courses in addition to the gen ed framework. So this is a printable version of the entire program. There's also the semester by semester, which is the key component that students, when I did talk with students, they said, I would have loved to have had this when I started. Um, so what you see here is just a semester by semester breakdown. And when you open up the option blocks for the system wide gen ed, you see, like I showed you before, a master list with the recommended courses. And then we have this printable option, which we're really excited about, similar to Barton. It gives students some like a piece of paper they can take away with them. So they have the semester by semester breakdown again. And then at the bottom, we add some key information, just some reminders. And then we have broken down everything institutional, all the all seven of the system wide gen ed framework buckets. And it gives students the opportunity to also see in more detail in a printable version the what semester offerings there are, are there prereqs, are there grade requirements? And um, it's it's just a really great tool that students can use to um, you know, plan for the future. And we added really important language in there too, to just remind them these are suggested lists of courses and that they need to consult an advisor. And we, similar to Barton, as we are starting to use these documents and use the new website changes, we are finding things that we need to tweak and make more user-friendly or maybe change up the way it is presented. So um, that's how we've done it at HutchCC. Excellent. I appreciate the emphasis on the student resource there too, Jess. So thank you for that. Um, questions okay. or comments? Javen, anything going through your head about this? I think it's just a great resource. Um, I, I know I've been able to use something similar with my program at Pitt State, and it makes a world of a difference to have everything right in front of you. Great. Great. Thank you very much for, yeah. for sharing sure. your time and expertise. Great. All right, Sam, before I move, anything else there? Okay, good. Keep guiding me forward. But we will continue the SAM show here with under other matters, math pathways and math course placement update. You know, yes, just an update on what uh, these groups are doing. So we have the math pathways task force who's really been meeting since November of 2022. Um, our last meeting was just this past Monday. Uh, what we're looking at right now is just kind of continuing to map out those, those discipline meetings where uh, folks from similar majors across the system will come together and discuss the, the math general education course that, that is appropriate for those 
for those programs. But one thing I do want to mention about this group, um, two of our super key members have been very helpful. And um, they designed a math skills survey that we sent out to the system last year that's really put us in a good position this year to have those meetings with the discipline groups to start those conversations. The survey asked folks, what major program do you represent and what math skills are important for students in your programs? The skills were just mixed up. Nobody could identify really which skill went with which course. So the information we got back was very helpful, especially for some disciplines. Um, Keith Dryling of Forte State, the math chair there, and Whitney Turner of Johnson County, a math uh, associate professor there. Um, they were key in, in creating that survey and helping us and conveying the results as we meet with these discipline groups. So it helps set the conversation up really nicely. Um, the next discipline groups to meet and the Math Pathways Task Force members are invited to all of these meetings. So they're very helpful to have there. The next group to meet is going to be business next Tuesday on the 26th. And then we'll have the health sciences and exercise sciences meet next Thursday on the 28th. So next week's gonna be a super busy week for all of these folks, <coughs> but I really appreciate them. Um, the last piece is the Math Course Placement Measures Committee. They met on February 28th. They heard a presentation on all of these projects that are going on just to kind of set a foundation for them. Uh, we talked about the gateway course placement and developmental education policy. Um, and we began discussing placement measures for college algebra. Um, that group is discussing multiple measures for course placement without developmental support for college algebra, elementary statistics, and contemporary math with the understanding that students who don't meet the placement requirements will still be allowed to enroll in those gateway courses. They'll just also be required to enroll in a developmental section to help them understand the course content better. Uh, we're meeting again on Friday. Since we last met, one of the members of the committee went ahead and sent a proposal for placement measures for each of those three courses. So the group's got a lot to talk about this, this coming Friday. So that completes my update. Thank you very much. Sounds like a lot of high engagement from everyone involved. It's been good. Any, any questions? And that's total implementations fall of 26, is that yes. right? Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Welcome, Carla. All right. Um, I sound like a broken record. This is the third time I've gone over this, but <laughs> the, the Gen Ed exceptions and extensions are on our website. Um, we've had some discussions today about what that looks like and is that helpful for students, and we think it is. The universities have provided their um, specific websites that list their exceptions or their um, extensions, so we hope that that is providing the transparency for students, advisors, um, and SCOPs. We talked about the different audiences, what we need to clarify for the institutions is not necessarily what we need to provide for the students. So we need to take a look at that and make sure that we're providing accurate language to, to all parties. Um, so we've clarified what the, ex the exceptions versus extensions mean. Uh, and uh, am I recalling right, our extensions were, were for one academic year? Yes, okay. yes. All right, any, uh, any other comments or questions on that topic? Very good. Program uh, to program. And the, the, the system-wide elementary oh, ed, there, there's only one update there. They, uh, they chose the contemporary math for their gen ed part of that. It was very important for all of them that a lot of high school students take college algebra until we can kind of start getting more of the contemporary math into the high schools, that this is really the appropriate course for elementary ed majors. Everyone wanted the flexibility to to substitute that. This is the preferred course, it's the default course, but for a while there's probably gonna be a few students coming through with college algebra, but I firmly believe that the outcomes in contemporary math are much more beneficial for our elementary ed majors than in college algebra. And uh, so the other programs are kind of using the, the trail that the elementary ed folks blazed and using that same format and the flexibility of, you know, these are two courses that we feel either one would be appropriate for these majors. I sat in with the, the nursing folks earlier this week and they were able to come up with a pretty good rough draft that when they first started, there was a lot of, well, we can't do this. We have so many hours in our, 
and then at the end of the meeting, they had 59 hours. So it was it was pretty impressive for an hour's work. So I, I think we'll get there. Um, their rough draft is due to us uh, March 29th, just to kind of dip stick along to see where they are on their on their projects for all of them. Thank you very much. Great to hear that work moving forward. <clears throat> Any questions? All right. Very good. Anything else from you, Carla? Nope. So okay. okay. My favorite part of the agenda. Good news from campuses. But let's uh we're okay on time, so today you can share three. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> what, a, what a benevolent I know, I tell you. <laughs> so, Provost Mercer, please feel free to come to the table if you'd like, and you can lead off. Well, last meeting, I squeezed three under one theme, and <laughs> Regent Lane noticed that, so I came prepared to share one highlight. Today. Okay, all right. <laughs> That balances out then. Um, Wildcat 91.9 is the radio station on campus. We're celebrating 75 years. That makes it the longest running FM station in the United States. Again, entirely run by, by students. So we're celebrating 75 years. Their motto is you belong. And so regardless of your musical genre preference, you will hear it on 91.9. So a wonderful learning laboratory for our students. And um, we're very excited to, to celebrate 75 years. That's Thank great. you, Regent Lane. What's the call number again? 91.9. <laughs> Very good. Thank you very much. Council Beaver. Sure. Well, I'm I'm very happy to be here to share some of our good news. So um, just to make sure that I hit the marker of three <laughs> and to follow up on the gen ed conversation, I, I, I will share that that we have completed our um, degree maps and they those are posted on our website. So we're, we're very pleased to have that. And now our, we're working on making sure that the gen ed framework is incorporated into those. Um, I also wanted to share for our second item, uh, we talk a lot about applied learning at Wichita State. And so it occurred to me that maybe you all would be interested to see a little bit more about what that actually means. Um, and so uh, while we have a wide range of ways that we incorporate applied learning into our degree programs, this particular one that I wanted to talk to you about today, I, it just, it, it's a really good description of how we're kind of thinking ahead. And so it's our um, mechanical engineering practice course. It's, um, and the project we're working with trained technologies. So the students in that course are looking at the designs for the new biomed center and um, are, are putting together options for the HVAC system. So um, and using alternative energy and really trying to kind of think outside. So trained technologies may or may not use the information that our students come up with, but the fact that they're working right alongside that, that contractor, I think is the right word. Um, it gives them just really very practical experience um, and something that we most likely will use. One of their other projects last year was um, they we kept receiving feedback from our coke uh, coke arena that it's not very accessible and so our students designed handrails for coke arena and put those in and use some 3d printing so it's just it's um one example of how we're really trying to incorporate in every one of our degree programs some applied learning um and then my third item, we will be hosting uh, WSU Day tomorrow on our, uh, sorry, on Saturday on our campus. We'll have over 1,500 people on campus, future students, parents, guests, um, really trying on Wichita State for the day and getting some more information. It's our number one recruiting event. So it's always a, it's a great day to be a shocker on Saturday. So I wanted to do that as well. Thank you very much. Provost Arnsdorf. Good morning. Uh, the first uh, item that I want to share this morning is that we officially received, we received our official notice of our affirmation of accreditation from the Higher Learning Commission uh, about three weeks ago. I know many of uh, my peers in the room <coughs> and on Zoom are, have recently gone through that or are going through that process and uh, know why I'm smiling so big. <laughs> so, um, uh, 
appreciate all of our university efforts um, to get to that point. Um, one of the things that I wish I could do every year, I just don't have the time, is to meet with each academic department. Of course, I meet with deans and my direct reports often, um, but I don't get around to every academic department and spend time in those units every year. It's just not possible, but I'm doing that this year. I want to share with you two highlights that have come from uh, a couple of my recent meetings. One with the Department of Teacher Education. Um, I learned that we have um, 108 student teachers placed this spring. And um, most interesting to me out of that number shared is that two of those students, one is in Laos, the country of Laos, and another student is in the country of Jordan doing their student teaching, um, which is just incredible uh, that, 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 first of all, that can even happen. Um, and second of all, that, that they're getting that unique um, opportunity across the world. Um, we have 130 students that will be placed for fall of 2024. So that's exciting for our education program at Fort Hayes and uh, to hopefully fill some needs that we know are so desperately out there in our education system. The third uh, item I want to share is from my visit with the Department of Psychology. Uh, I learned more about our psychology testing clinic. Uh, you can visit our website and see more information about that, but kind of in the spirit of applied learning, uh, we have a psychology testing clinic where either a referral or a self-referral could come in and, and be tested uh, for, for various uh, behavioral um, uh, types of assessments um, and receive diagnoses. And um, we are filling a need in our region uh, that is pretty incredible, and I hadn't fully understood what that need was until I visited with the department. Um, there is a tremendous need for these assessments so that interventions can happen in our school system. Um, and in Northwest Kansas, there's not enough, uh, there are not enough people trained to be able to do those assessments. Um, and so people are um, school counselors, medical doctors, um, parents, um, having to wait months in some cases to, in most, most of these cases are children. Uh, they're having to wait months to get um, some kind of testing done. So our students, our grad students are involved in this, um, along with a faculty member who has lots of clinical psychology experience. Um, and this is what was maybe most astounding to me. Um, in, in, in our area, those assessments from start to finish um, in our communities, uh, can cost upwards of $2,000 and at Fort Hayes between $100 and $300. Uh, so we probably need to look at our revenue model a little bit, <laughs> uh, uh, which we're doing, um, but, but uh, we're filling a need uh, and um, serving our region in an area that I didn't even fully understand and appreciate uh, until about two weeks ago. So I wanted to share that with you this morning. Thank you. Those are very powerful examples. Um, and here's to Shirley, thank you for that. I think we have our other provost online. We'll start with Provost Smith. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Uh, thank you for giving us three this morning, by the way, Chair Lane. Uh, <laughs> okay. First of all, I'd like to, uh, with Jabin sitting at the table there, one of our successful things here recently is, was actually our recent SGA elections. I want to congratulate Jabin on his term and thank him for his service. Hannah Eckstein, who is there with you today, was the is our president-elect. So if you happen to see her, she's in, I believe, in a nice red dress. If you'll congratulate her, that would be great. Uh, a second thing that I think is kind of exciting at Pitt State is we have two grads that have won the National Millican Educator Award. One was Alan Alex Lasky, Master of Arts in History, and then Matt Mask. Uh, a Master of Science in Education. So that's two graduates that are successful from our programs that are out there practicing. And most, and probably pretty big, I think is a very big deal at Pitt State, is the fact that we have back-to-back -back national championships in our indoor track and field. And uh, that was actually here at Pitt State. Our men's team uh, actually had to win two of the final three events to accomplish that task. So that that's a pretty awesome task. Uh, obviously, we know that most athletes Combining practice and academics is a difficult thing. And our women came in second, the runner-up position. That's the best they've done in the indoor track and field. So we had a very successful uh, track and field. And 
And, and one of the interesting things is that in the last six seasons, we have five championships in national track and field. And I think that's impressive. So, uh, uh, Provost Bicklemeyer, if you'd let Dean Ginsburg know, I'd be glad to share some championship hats with him that I'd be glad to do that because sometimes he likes to mention your championships. <laughs> That's awesome, Provost Smith. Thank you very much. And I'm quite impressed that Hannah is coordinating her outfits with you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I saw her on in the meeting earlier this morning. Just to play on. Yeah. We should move on, Dr. Lane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I work with Hannah's mother, so I'm in good shape. Go ahead. <laughs> very good. All right. Uh, Provost Thomas. Well, good morning. Um, we host the Kansas... Um, Future Teacher Academy at ESU each year. It's a five-day summer academy where we have high school students that are participating in education-oriented activities, uh, really to motivate people to get into the profession of teaching. And I'm very proud to, uh, to relay that we had 180 high school students who applied to be a part of the academy this summer. And that is a record number of applications. It's actually twice the number that we had just last year. So very proud of, of um, where, where that, that event is heading this year. In our School of Humanities and Social Sciences, uh, they have partnered with the Kansas Volunteer Commission to host the 2024 Civic Engagement Conference. And that'll be held here at Emporia State on Wednesday, April 10th. And it will bring together students, schools, community organizations, uh, with the purpose of learning to network around civic engagement, mentoring, and volunteerism. So it's all about empowering Kansas through civic engagement. And then the third one on my list is actually one that I can share with, it's a, it's a joint accolade with Howard and Pitt State. Um, we, we had uh, uh, one of our faculty members, uh, uh, Rachel Bowes from our biology department, um, uh, who worked with uh, one of the faculty at Pitt State, uh, I believe that's James Whitney, and they took a spring break joint field trip that included uh, a total of about 14 students um, uh, to uh, South Padre Island, Texas, uh, to study sea turtles over spring break. And uh, Rachel was kind enough to share a, a lot of photographs of that trip with me, and I'm pretty sure those students had a much more um, exciting spring break than I had. <laughs> and that's that all for me today. Thank you. Thank you very much. That sounds like a, a great spring break. So so thank you. And um, last but certainly not least, KU Provost Bickelmeyer, welcome. Good morning, everybody. And thank you for this opportunity. First, I'd note, um, Howard duly noted, and I will share uh, with with Dean Ginsburg, um, I I will note while we're talking about national championships that KU has now qualified three teams to go to the debate national championships, and I'll remind everybody, um, as I'm sure my debate coach will be coach will be very happy if I do that. KU has as many debate national championship titles as we do basketball national championship titles. So, um, just no, no, yeah. noting that for the academics. Uh, in terms of student awards, Elizabeth Apple, who's a senior in civil engineering with an emphasis on environmental engineering, is the most recent Jayhawk to be named a Gates Cambridge Scholar. The scholarship covers the full cost of studying at the University of Cambridge in the UK. Gates Cambridge Scholars are chosen for their outstanding intellectual ability, leadership potential, and commitment to improving the lives of others and reasons for their, their choice, of course. Uh, for Apple, that will be pursuing a master philosophy degree in engineering and for sustainable development. There's been there are about 25 Gates Cambridge awards available each year in the U.S. and KU now has won a total of four of those awards since the program was established. Also, want to note that our Center for Teaching Excellence um, and the great work of the director and her team, Dia Fulmer. Uh, was recently highlighted in the Chronicle of Higher Education for our work in innovation in uh, engaging education in STEM disciplines, and particularly in terms of uh, our work in teaching evaluations tied to um, innovative education. Uh, and then on the research front, I noticed, and this is 
this is one regent lane this is one item that i'm gonna say three <laughs> faculty four. names in. so <laughs> So um, for faculty research, we have three KU faculty have won NSF career awards uh, recently. This is the highest honor given by the National Science Foundation to early career researchers. The faculty are um, Elizabeth Mills, who's an assistant professor of astronomy. She received a five-year, over $800,000 grant from NSF for research on how supermassive black holes grow. Um, Hartwin Pilars, is assistant professor in physics and astronomy, and he just received a five-year, $500,000 grant to continue innovative work on zinc ion batteries. The batteries are sustainable alternative to lithium ion batteries. I'll also note um, that in that regard, we're excited to connect him. We just recently hosted a leadership team from Panasonic uh, for their battery uh, plant in DeSoto, and uh, again, making connections on um, on great work in terms of alternative energy. And then Admin Husick uh, also received the Career Scholar Award or Early Scholar Award from NSF. He's an assistant professor of civic, environmental, and architectural engineering. He received a five-year $600,000 grant to conduct research that'll ultimately provide a set of predictive tools that will indicate when, where, and how water quality has deteriorated. And the ultimate goal is to have tools to ensure water quality and quantity, not only in Kansas, but around the globe, uh, as we have um, strong and historical strength in water work through the Kansas Geological Survey. So that's that's the update on NSF Career Awards. Quite impressive. So thank you. And I appreciate your creative way of getting all of those in. So uh, <laughs> was one well, NSF well, uh, news with okay. three parts. <laughs> <laughs> right. Very good. It's very um, nice that you're making your research award celebration next month inclusive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's terrific. All right. Um, that's the end of our agenda. Any other business that we need to talk about today? Seeing none, accept a motion to adjourn. So move. Second. All right. We are adjourned. Thank you all very much. Great meeting, Madam Chair. Thank you.